Let's talk about solvent welding PVC pipes for swimming pool and spa applications. When it comes to solvent welding, there's probably a host of options available to you. I don't know anything about them because I have only ever used the weld on products. I mean, there's been times where I've been out of town, couldn't find what I needed, and my suppliers weren't available, and I went to the local hardware store and bought whatever they had. It's not normally what I do. I would normally buy through my pool and spa wholesale supplier. They carry the whole line of weld on products. And as a result, it's just all I've ever used. So I definitely trust it. I highly endorse it. In my world, it's kind of the only option when it comes to solvent welding PVC. So there's a couple of things I want to say about solvent welding PVC. And this is swimming pool Steve officially endorsed stuff here. Use primer and the solvent cement. Don't just use the solvent cement. And if you're a pool pro or a homeowner and you're like, I never use the primer and it's always fine, that's inferior quality craftsmanship. And it just, that's the bottom line here. It's not the same quality bond if you're not using the primer to soften the plastic first. You can use it for non-pressure rated applications without a primer. And you will get a sufficient bond between the two materials, but it is not the same quality of bond. It's not going to have the same longevity, the same resistance to pipe hammer or extreme pressures or temperature variations or any of those good things that you definitely want with any solvent welded PVC, especially something that you're going to be burying, burying, burying for something the likes of a swimming pool. I mean, the, it's the worst possible thing that you could end up having a leak with. Why? Why would you skip an integral step in the process? I don't even need primer. I just throw the glue on there and we're good to go, right? Not good to go in my world. If you want it done properly, you use primer and then use the solvent cement. So that introduces a new uh, subject for me. I'm, I am a little old school and I, you know, plumbed with uh, solvent cements for a long time, decades when there was really only a couple of options available. Like the ones that I used to use pretty much exclusively, these two guys here. So 711 gray, it's a heavy bodied gray and 705 clear, which I would use for mechanical room installations. And I guess worth to mention as well, if you're in an area where I, I live in an area that has a ton of flexible PVC and those ones I would use a 795 flexible PVC solvent cement. In all of these cases, I'm using primer. So why did I choose these ones? Well, a hundred years ago when I was first doing this stuff, I just picked it at random. I didn't know it was any better. Like, and I'll give you a specific reference here. So 711 gray, it's a heavy bodied medium setting. What does that mean? And what is its actual application? Because I've grown into be a person who appreciates the technicality of the rules. Like what is it actually for? And why am I not using it for that? Why am I using the wrong thing for the wrong application when there's a better product available for it? And so this heavy bodied stuff is intended for large diameter pipes, much larger than we work on in swimming pool and spa installations. And I've done some pretty crazy pool and spa installations. And short of like a residential level theme park that you're building with 30 inch pipes, you're not gonna need heavy bodied. You're gonna need the regular bodied for anything up to and including four inch, which is almost every swimming pool installation. So regular body is all you need. When it comes to installing equipment rooms, I always went to the 705 clear because I just want a high quality finished product. You know, I don't want a lot of glue and I'm, I'm pretty keen with, the, with doing the solvent welding because I've done approximately one Brazilian of these connections. So you get kind of good at it over time. There's a lot of muscle memory involved and there's not a lot of extra glue and primer that gets squeezed out. And if you do your job properly, you don't knock the can of primer over while you're building the whole thing. But in some areas, you can't use the clear or you shouldn't use the clear. And that almost specifically will involve anything where you're going to be, you know, burying pipes in a trench. They want to see the purple primer. They want to see a gray glue so that they can just visually tell during an inspection, hey, these joints don't look like they have any glue or primer on them. Did they get missed? Oh, no, we used clear like that. that that's you know, an application where you wouldn't want to use that. Does the product work? Like I have confidence the product works. Like if you were in a situation you needed to make a joint and you only had the clear stuff available, is it going to work? Like I believe it's going to work, but you don't have that quality assurance visually to be able to quality check your work as you're going. And I mean, I'm, I, I've been out of the game for a little bit, but I definitely used to qualify myself as a plumbing ace and 
I would swear that I would never, ever, ever miss or botch a connection. But when you're building pools that have hundreds, sometimes thousands of thousands of solvent welded connections, and sometimes the pipes are pretty big and it gets pretty tough, you can end up with leaks no matter how much of an ace you think you are. And that's why I just don't accept the answer from people like, oh, I don't pressure test. I'm just really careful when I glue stuff. It's like, you don't think I was really careful when I'm solvent welding pipes for a million dollar pool and spa installation? Believe me, brother, I was super, super careful. These things happen. There's a little piece of grit or sand, or there was a burr on the pipe that kind of shaved the solvent cement as you were sliding it, or you didn't twist it enough, or it backed off. Look, there's a lot of stuff that can go on, and that's why there's an advantage in using the colored stuff so that you can see visually, is this pipe backing off? Did I forget to use the primer on this connection? You know, you're making a million of these connections and you get into the rhythm and, yeah, did I miss something there? Boy, I sure wouldn't want to. And that's why we primarily don't use the clear stuff, and especially when you're, when you're dealing with a below grade or buried pipes application. So that's what I used to use, and that's pretty much it. I would just have a, a clear primer, a purple primer, a 705 clear, and a 711 gray, and that was pretty much my whole toolkit for solvent welding. Short of a uh, rare occasion when I would need to come across a transition from ABS to PVC, in which case I would use a transition glue, or another rare occasion, less rare in commercial applications, where I need heat-rated solvent welded uh, connections to CPVC pipe, chlorinated PVC pipe. And that in that case, you would use the orange CPVC uh, solvent cement for pretty much everything else. It was 705 clear, 711 gray, occasionally 795 flex if I'm working with flex pipe, clear primer, purple primer, but there's more stuff available now than there used to be. We're fortunate. Now they make products that cater to the pool and spa industry, which is fantastic. We don't have to use, you know, whatever's left over in the regular, you know, house building, utility, you know, installations of plumbing systems. This is pool and spa specific stuff. So one of the first things is pool cleaner. I had actually never heard of pool cleaner before. And what the product does is just as it sounds, it cleans the pipe before you do the primer and solvent cement weld. And you might be thinking, well, isn't the primer do that? And like, I mean, it definitely does. That primer is pretty aggressive stuff. But as a pool plumber, I can tell you, things get pretty hairy out there in the trenches. It's mud and rain and dirt and sand and all kinds of uncontrollable environmental factors that you're fighting. And these connections have to be perfect. They truly do. You can't have a 99% good solvent weld. That is not good enough for a swimming pool. So the pool cleaner product comes in when you're in the trenches and you're running pipes and there's mud and all this stuff or the pipes you got from your supplier are really old and caked in dirt and grime and who knows what. I could use my primer brush for that but what happens when I put that brush back into my primer can? And you know this if you do a lot of solvent welding. That primer can lasts a lot longer than the solvent cement does. So you're gonna have that primer around a while. Do I really wanna be contaminating it constantly with dirt and mud and sand and grit and who knows what else? Definitely not, and that's what the pool cleaner product is for. So we've got pool cleaner product, you have a clear primer, you have a purple primer, and I've talked about the old products that I used to use when I was plumbing this stuff back in the day, but let's talk a little bit about some of the new products that's, that are available from Weldon. The pool and spa specific products available from Weldon. There's a couple of different ones for different applications. 725 wet or dry, 747 pool or spa, and the 744 clear. Now, again, I wasn't familiar with these. These aren't, these aren't the ones that were in my toolbox back when I was doing installations daily of swimming pools. So I had to do a little bit of research here because I... I didn't really know what the difference was. What are these used for? They kind of looked similar when I was reading, you know, the information package that came with them. So I did what I normally do when I want to learn more information. Aside from going right to the manufacturer and asking them questions, which is a great thing to do, I usually go to check out the MSDS sheets. These are the safety data sheets that are available for basically every product in existence in the event there was an emergency. What if there was a chemical spill and firefighters are showing up and they're like, what the heck is this stuff? We need to know what it is so we know how dangerous it is, how we can fight the fires, this kind of stuff. All that information would be contained within the MSDS sheets. There's information that includes 
what the manufacturers put into the product aside from a few stipulations for proprietary products that they, you know, a manufacturer might not want you to know about. For the most part, whatever's in a product is available for you in the MSDS sheet. So I went to the MSDS sheets for all of these products and I took a look at them and I noticed some interesting information. Right away, there's basically classifications I'm seeing. All of these kind of get grouped into one of three categories. Now bear with me here, I'm not a scientist. I'm a pool guy, that's what I claim to be, that's what I am on TV or YouTube as the case may be. Don't wear a lab coat to work. So, you know, talking about the chemical structure of these different solvent cements is a little bit above my pay grade, but I did just wanna note differences between them because that was something that I was able to identify. There are four primary ingredients that I am looking at when I'm looking at these MSDS sheets and comparing all these solvent cements. And they're, you know, basically they all, they're all doing the same thing, but for different reasons. And I'm sure there's lots of good engineering behind why it is they use a certain concentrations of which one in each. But this information should help you as a pool or spa professional to know which one might be right for your application. So one of the things that we're gonna be talking about here is the acetone content. Another thing that we're going to be looking at is the MEK content, methyl ethyl ketone. The other two are cyclohexanone and tetrahydrofurone is the other. These are all just these are all just aggressive chemicals that they're using for this solvent welding process, but the concentrations of each of them is something that was interesting to me. So first of all, MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, that's a product that I'm familiar with because it's something that we would use in, have you ever heard of the Schmear product? It's, uh, you get some like PVC bits and a really noxious liquid and you mix the two together and it makes like a liquid PVC that you can pour on, apply or schmear as the case may be. And then it hardens like rigid PVC. So that product is methyl ethyl ketone. It's something that's going to melt PVC. So I was familiar with that already, but I noticed that some of these solvent cements contain methyl ethyl ketone in a small amount. Some contain it in a high amount. Some don't contain any MEK at all. Now, why would that be significant? Well, first of all, MEK might not be something that you can use in your area. I'm not sure if California, you can have products that have methyl ethyl ketone in it. I'm unsure about that. I don't live anywhere near California, but that is something that I thought that I picked up when I was researching this stuff. So some of these do not contain MEK. Which ones are those? 747, 795, and 711. Those solvent cements contain no methyl ethyl ketone at all. They're gonna be a different combination of the other three based on a percentage wise. And even that's significant, we'll touch on that more in a second here. Let's talk about the products that do have MEK. 725 was an interesting find here because all of the rest of them are kind of like a bunch of them are like that, a bunch of them are like this, this one's all on its own and it has 1% MEK. I think that 1% MEK concentration is what is giving it this wet or dry effect. The MEK is a very aggressive substance at softening the plastics. I think that's why it's used for this primarily, both the solvent welding, but also in a trace amount here in the wet or dry product specifically because it's gonna help compensate for the fact that there is a little bit of moisture, the MEK evaporates very quickly. Uh, and again, it's going to be a little more aggressive than some of these other chemicals at softening the pipe plastics. Well, what else did I learn here? I learned something really interesting about the 705 Clear product. And the what was interesting to me there, again, this was one that I had worked with quite a bit in the past. And this product contains up to a 25% MEK concentration by weight. That's a lot, 25%. Again, the wet or dry only had 1% uh, by weight, whereas this stuff being 25 is very, very high. And the 744 product, same thing. So of course, right away, we're noticing something. The two clear solvent cements uh, rely on a heavy concentration of MEK. So I thought, I found that, like if you're a nerd for pool stuff like me, I found that to be interesting, especially when we consider that the 747, 711, and 795 do not contain any MEK at all. They contain a slightly higher concentration of acetone and cyclohexanone versus the ones that have the MEK uh, product added to it. So what does all this mean to you, the person watching this video? It means that there's a right product for each application. 
And I just want to kind of summarize that for you. I've already touched on the purple and the clear primer and the differences, uh, why we use one, you know, versus the other. And then I talked about what I used to use for solvent welding, basically any PVC pipes. But with the pool and spa specific stuff, something that this does is it sets up extremely quickly. This is actually really important for us pool and spa professionals. Time is money. We don't have seconds to spare. We really don't. We barely get bathroom breaks. We don't get lunch breaks. It's a tough go out there during the busy times of years. So when you're making repairs to a system, you want that system to set up as fast as possible because you might not be able to leave until the system's set up. So an extremely fast setup time is something that the pool and spa specific products have for solvent welding from what weld on. So if you live in an area where you're not supposed to use MEK or you can't use MEK products, then I would be using the 711 or the 747 solvent cements. Outside of those areas, I think I'm going to lean to the 725 wet or dry, or if I'm doing an equipment installation, then I can look at using the uh, high MEK concentration uh, clear solvent cements, 705 and 744. If I need a heat rated uh, connection, I'm going to use the CPVC solvent cement, that's the 714 number. Transitioning from ABS to PVC, 794, but remember this is for non-pressure rated applications. I wouldn't use this, for example, connecting to an ABS skimmer. PVC pipes, ABS skimmer, I hope it's a threaded port. If it's not, you need a transition cement, and I have never found one that's rated for pressure applications. This one is a perfect example, it says rate on the can, not for use in pressure rated applications. Pool cleaner if you're working in the trenches or if your pipes are extra dirty. Pool primer to soften the, uh, the rigidity of the plastic such that you can make a proper solvent weld with one of the solvent cements that I've talked about here. So thank you for coming to my TED talk on weld on solvent cements. They have a lot more than this. This is just touching the surface of the products that this company offers, but relating to pool and spa specific stuff, I tend to lean towards their pool and spa specific brand. I'm actually excited that this is something that they offer. I consider this progress for the pool and spa industry that we're attracting more mainstream attention and demanding manufacturers create products that meet our specific needs because the needs of a pool plumber are different than the needs of a utility plumber or a plumber who installs roughins for houses. I'd like to thank Weldon for sponsoring my YouTube channel, and I would like to encourage you to check out their website, weldon.com. I'm very happy to endorse these products. It's not just one that I think are pretty good or good enough for pools. This is the only product I use when it comes to solvent welding PVC systems for swimming pools and spas. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com. Weldon the world's most trusted bond. I, th I thought I was the world's most trusted bond.